the test file review. Problem six says, find the focal length of a lens whose index of refraction is 1.62 and its radius of curvature on the front side is negative 20 centimeters and on the back side is positive 30 centimeters. So we want to be able to draw a lens from just the description of its radius of curvatures. In this case, there's two radius of curvatures. And we want to also be able to calculate its uh, focal length and then convert that to di diopters. In the previous problem, I told you how to calculate the focal length if you have one surface, one side is curved, and you want to know where the image is. So I put an object here, here, and I wanted to know where the image of that is. I could have also put the object outside and want to know where the image is inside of the uh, uh, lens itself. This is only one side is curved, okay? How about if the two sides are curved? If the two sides are curved, then it might look something like that or it might look something different. So let's talk about lenses such as eyeglasses whose two sides have some kind of curvature. What do those look like? Okay. Well, in this case, we have R1 is negative. Negative means it faces to the left. So it's curved this way. Okay. And more or less negative 20. So that means it kind of forms part of a sphere and its radius of curvature is negative 20 centimeters, means it's this way, right? The right side of the lens has a radius of curvature facing that way. You see, positive 30. So the lens is going to look something like this. Facing that way means it will go this way. Now, will it be steeper looking than this or will it be, uh, will it be flatter? Well, a bigger radius of curvature, as we saw in the last problem also, Bigger radius of curvature means flatter surface. A completely flat surface has infinite radius of curvature, okay? Complete infinity. So this, in this case, is positive 30, so it's a little bit flatter than this one. It's goes like this, okay? And then if you were to draw a circle, it would be a bigger circle, okay? So positive 30, see it's farther away than this one. So what kind of lens is this called? This is called biconcave, okay? Biconcave. Biconcave lens. This would be an excellent fit for someone who is nearsighted. The middle is thinner than the outer edges. It would also be called a diverging lens. Diverging. Okay, <clears throat> so what would its uh, focal length be? It should be negative. So the equation is 1 over f is equal to n minus 1, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. We are assuming that the background is air, so the index of refraction is air. n is the index of refraction of the material, okay? So let's put this in now. n is going to be 1.62 minus 1. 1 over R1. So 1 over R1 is going to be negative, negative 20, minus 1 over R2, R2 is positive. 1 over 30, okay? So of course you're going to get what? 1 over F is equal to 0 0.62. This one is going to be negative uh, 30, negative 20, negative 50 over 600. Cancels, cancels. 1 over F is equal to... <clears throat> 0.62 over, and then this is negative 1 over 12. So the focal length is going to be what? Uh, negative 12 over 0.62. Okay. Negative 12 divided by 0 0.62. Negative 19. Negative 19.35 centimeters. So remember, this is a diverging lens. Its primary focal point is where? To the left. It's negative 19. So where does that put us? So somewhere about here. That's its focal point. Focal point primary. So if the problem had told us there is an object here, where is its image going to be, then we can do the drawings again. The straight line 
will bend in such a way as it appears to be coming from there. And then there would be a secondary focal point 19 centimeters to the right. And then the line headed towards the secondary is going to come out straight and the image appears here, you see? So once you can find the focal point, then you can do ray diagrams and you can find where the image will be, right? Now, what's going to be the optometric value here? What is the optometrist going to assign? The D is going to be 100 centimeter over F, 100 centimeter over negative 19.35 centimeter. So it looks like it's going to be about negative 5. Okay? Uh, 100 divided by negative 19.35, negative 5.17. Negative 5.17, that's going to be your uh, prescription, okay? Now, let's do a little variations of this. What, can we do this now? Can we do this surface uh, flat and this side only curved? Would it be a diverging lens still? The answer is yes, right? What would its focal length be? What's the radius of curvature of this? R2, okay? Uh, that's going to be uh, infinity, right? R2. So this one here is infinity. So you have just 1 over F is equal to 0.62, negative 1 over 20. So the focal length is what? It's going to be negative 20 divided by 0.62, negative 32. 0.25. What does that mean? It's a larger focal length, so the focal length is going to be negative 32 brings us somewhere about here. Right? So is it weaker or stronger? Well, a straight ray will bend in such a way as it's coming from there. Okay? So it won't bend as much as this one, right? And then the secondary focal length will be somewhere about here, 32, right? So a straight ray headed for that, uh, straight ray headed for that, goes straight, and then the image comes out to be back here. <clears throat> okay, so the same object will form an image a little behind the one that was a negative 20. Right? So the more to the left the focal point is, the weaker the lens is, right? So it's better if you want a stronger one, it's better to bend it this way, right? Flatter one is weaker. So what would be the diopters of that? The 100 divided by that answer, diopter negative 3. Negative 3.1, I get. Okay, so do you see, if I want a prescription that is not as strong, I make that part flat. Okay, how about like this? Can I make it like this? Curved this way, but not as strongly as this one. Maybe like looking like this, flatter. Is it still diverging lens? So now the curvature is on this side, right? Now what should I put for R2, right? Well, since it's on this side, I got to put negative, right? And since the, it's a bigger circle, I got to put negative 30 or negative 40 or negative 50, right? So let's just say I put negative 30. What's going to happen? Right? This is also going to come out diverging. So I'm going to put here R2, negative 30. Okay? Notice you have to put negative there. There's already a negative here, and then you have to put one more negative. So what's going to happen? This one goes up there 30 minus this one 20, and then you multiply them, you get negative 600. So you get 1 over F is equal to 0.62. This one is 10 over negative 600, then 10 and 10 cancel, 
So what is the focal length here? Okay, this is the weakest. They're both curved this way, right? The, in, the middle is not that thin anymore, right? So what's the diapeters? 100 over that? Well, it's going to be negative one something something, right? This is for people whose eyes are not that weak at all. They just need a little bit of strengthening, right? So both of them are curved this way, curved this way. And then you would put your eyes over here, right? And they would help bring the images a little bit closer, right? So this is a pretty weak lens. You could also do this the other way, okay? It was like this, flat, then I made it like this, like that. Three. All three are diverging lenses. Can I make three combinations that make a converging lens? The answer is yes. I could go like this. This would be equivalent of doing this. Can I, uh, I could do this way, flat. See the middle is thicker, here the middle is thinner. And I could do like this. I could go like that, and I could make this flatter. Okay? So in this case, what are representative values of R1 and R2? Here, R1 might be, for example, positive, 20. See, in, in our case, R1 was negative. And then what's going to be R2? R2 is going to be negative, so it could be negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, depending on how curved it is, right? Let's say it's negative 30. So that means it would be more curved than the left one, okay? So this would be called biconvex lens. It's the strongest converging lens, right? It's going to have a very small focal length. It's going to have a strong diopters, po probably positive 10, positive 9, right? How about this one? R1, it might be something like positive 20. R2 is going to be infinity. This is a little weaker than that. <coughs> and then this one is weaker than that. This one weaker than that. This one weaker than that, right? So this one is going to be, R1 is going to be positive 20. And then R2 is going to be what? It's still going to be positive, but over there, and it's going to be bigger away, flat, uh, flatter than this one. So it's going to be something like positive 30. You see? So if it's negative, it's very strong. Infinite, not as strong. Positive means it's curved that way. This one is um, a weaker than that. Okay? So now you can see how to handle all different six combinations. How to find their focal length, how to draw them, and how to change that to diopters, and how to predict where the image of an object will be. Okay, so thank you very much.